Good morning, beloved. Peace be with you. As we continue our journey through Genesis this, uh, in our first readings, we jump big time now. We went from chapter 32 yesterday to chapter 41 today. So we always have to be reading on our own to get the full story or the full highlights of these witness stories. Uh, at Daily Masses, we just get the highlights of the highlights. So here we are all of a sudden, we're, we're talking about the youngest son, Joseph, at the time. Uh, and so we catch up, we can catch up a little bit. You know, Jacob, whose cha name changed to Israel, he had the 12 sons at the time from four different women, two wives, two concubines. But the one he loved the most was the youngest, Joseph, who came from the only wife he wanted, Rachel, the one he always loved from the beginning. And so, of course, the other brothers were very jealous of that because he had his father's uh, first love, you could say. And so they decide one day to throw him in a pit and let him die. And then instead they say, well, why should we let him die? Let's sell him off to these Ishmaelites who are traveling by and at least make some money, get something out of this, you know. And so they, get, they sell him off and he gets traveled down to Egypt and sold off to, into Pharaoh's house. And um, does really well in Pharaoh's house. The favor of God is with him the whole time. Uh, but he gets set up by um, Potiphar's wife, I think it was, right? And, uh, <clears throat> and thrown into prison and ends up being in prison for a number of years, stays faithful to his relationship with God the whole time, always worshiping God, praising God, praying to God. And God stays faithful to him and allows him, gives him the spiritual gift, the gift of the Holy Spirit for uh, having dreams and interpreting those dreams correctly. And so he interprets some dreams and and ends up getting out because he interprets, um, I think, Pharaoh's dream correctly about seven years of feasting, seven years of fasting. And Pharaoh says, good job interpreting, you're in charge of organizing all that, right? It's like when, he's, when you come up with a great idea and the, they say, good idea, now you do it. Right? So he's in charge. He gets put, he's like second or third in the whole uh, country of Egypt next to Pharaoh. And he's organizing this, so he had saved up for seven years. Now he's there during the seven years of the famine, and um, <clears throat> everybody's coming to them as he is distributing the grain. And lo and behold, here comes his family back in the picture. This thing begins to come complete circle. And so what we see happening here in this, in this passage that we're given today, it's kind of an odd uh, passage just grabbed. It kind of feels like in the middle of nowhere, but what we're seeing is God's providence at work taking care of Joseph and the family, but especially God's providence at work, wanting to reconcile the family, to reconcile the relationships. This is always God's heart. God's heart is always about reconciliation. This is why Jesus came. He came with the ministry of reconciliation. This is the ministry, you know? Some of those people say, oh, I do this ministry and that ministry and the other ministry, but Every ministry needs to point to reconciliation in some way, reconciliation of our relationship back to God and uh, then secondarily our relationships with each other if those are broken in some way. So that's what we're seeing at work here is God. He's, he's working through all these ups and downs, all this imperfection in people's lives to try to bring back this family, this family that he has promised to bless, We've been looking at those three blessings he promised Abraham and Isaac and now Jacob and Israel. Israel, who's really old now, he's going to pass this on through his 12 sons who will become the 12 tribes of Israel, the nation of Israel, the kingdom of David. And so uh, God is staying faithful to his promise and working through these relationships to build the family back together so he can continue to provide worldwide blessing through this family like he promised. When it comes to reconciliation, though, it's always dependent on our free will, huh? Like God can do what he, God can set up the situations, but it's always up to the individuals to want to reconcile. That's what we see happening here in, uh, with the, the sons and with even Joseph. At first, Joseph is, throws him in prison for three days, huh? Let's get back at these guys a little bit. <laughs> he's not sure. Maybe he's wrestling with himself. Do I want to reconcile with these brothers? Or do I want to make them pay like they hurt me and made me pay and injured me for so long? And so he, he relents and wants to reconcile. Tomorrow we'll see he, be, he tells them who he is and asks about his father and says, bring my father over here. Bring the whole family over here, in fact, and I'll take care of you because God has put me in this great position. So this is, in effect, you know, it's, it's all about God's timing, too. Probably if uh, Joseph would have got away and went back home earlier than this, 
the brothers' hearts would not have been crushed and ready for reconciliation. It's not until they have to suffer a while that now they begin to see, oh my gosh, why did we do this to our brother so many years ago? And now they're, they're open to a form of repentance and reconciliation. So, so God will, if we, if we wait long enough, always seeking God's will and to follow God, to do what, he, what he's asking us to do, and he'll bring back full circle these relationships he wants us to, to be, recon- that he wants to be reconciled. Some will never be reconciled to the other side of heaven. But there's other ones where God's working and wants to set up the situations for us to reconcile. But it always depends on the persons, on the individual's free wills as well. Uh, you ever notice, you know, sometimes if you don't get along with somebody at work, you know, um, you know, then all of a sudden you don't get along with this person, you don't like the person, they don't like you. They're always, you guys are always rubbing each other the wrong way. But somehow almost every time you walk around work, you always bump into each other, you know. You can't avoid these people. It drives me crazy, you know. It can happen in any situation. It can happen at church. It can happen at work. It can happen in the home sometimes. And sometimes that always bumping into each other is God's way of wanting to reconcile the relationship. And he's just, he's setting it up, but he's waiting on the two individuals and their free will to want to take the step forward uh, with, with humility and, to, and for them to want to reconcile as well. So whatever relationships may be going on in your life right now, or in your family, or in the past, you know, the, the first step is always to be praying and paving the way for that reconciliation with prayer, uh, paving the way into people's hearts with prayer, and, if that, um, and then waiting on God to set it up, trusting that God's providence will set up the situation for the reconciliation. There's no need to force it or to always be taking um, steps forward towards that reconciliation ahead of God, you know, sometimes that's our hardest thing is waiting for God's providence to set up situations and to bring things back together. But along, while we're waiting on God's providence, we're always seeking his will, seeking to follow him with all of our heart, and we're paving the way with our prayers. So, Father, we just turn to you with a heart full of gratitude and thanksgiving that you have continued to reveal your heart to us every day, but especially this morning in the scriptures, this, this heart that you have for reconciliation of relationships, especially of your family. We pray, Lord, that whatever relationships in our lives may be broken, that you would just send your Holy Spirit in a special way today and this week to continue to bring healing into those hearts, healing into the situations, uh, and to, to begin with your providence to provide opportunities for reconciliation and that you would move our free will as well to, to step into and walk with you and indeed uh, deepening that reconciliation <clears throat> and growing together as your family. We pray these things together in Jesus' name. Amen.